Issue 5. It starts out with Sonic playing catch with himself, even though his little brother figure Tails is right there. It's a good thing Tails isn't upset about this, or he'd, or he'd look even more selfish. Because this is giving off the impression that Sonic cares more about showing off with the super speed and enjoying it than bonding with his best friend. Finally, Sonic runs into something which turns out to be a Robotnik Stadium, which a SWAT bot tells him. And the only reason the SWAT bot doesn't try to kill him or roboticize him is because it's not what Robotnik wants him to do. Now Robotnik has another plan for dealing with him. He tells him about his plan to challenge the Freedom Fighters to compete in the Robotropolis Olympic Games, and if they don't win even one, they'll be roboticized. Then the robot immaturely taunts Sonic and Tails. I like how Tails really gets annoyed at it, as well as the fact that the robot has enough life in him to actually act that way. That's definitely something I can compliment about this comic, is that they try to make the Eggman's robots more like actual people with the way they talk and behave. So they're more charming than just mindless machines. It's painfully obvious that this is a trap, and the Robotnik won't keep its promises. Unfortunately, all the other Freedom Fighters understand this, but Sonic is stubborn and insists that he'll be fast enough to win, because that'll totally keep Eggman from causing him trouble. I don't understand why the Freedom Fighters are letting him enter when it's so obviously a trap. There's no way that just because he wins means he's not going to get roboticized. Well, I guess if Sonic said that he could just destroy the roboticizer at the end no matter what, it would kind of defeat the whole tension of the episode, but still, Eggman's not going to make the events fun for them anyways, so there's no point in participating. Just stay home. Antoine insists on going to the Olympics too, finally showing that so-called arrogance he was supposed to have to justify Sonic's rivalry with him, but makes Tails sad in the process, because it makes it obvious that Tails isn't allowed to compete. And I really like how Sally shows that she actually cares about Tails, by being annoyed with Antoine. Like, she even looks like a, an annoyed mother. A SWAT bot replaces Sonic sneakers with energy constraining ones in an act that reminds me of the plot of Sonic Labyrinth. And Eggman yells at him about throwing him in the trash because he wanted them in a trophy room. Sally insists that Antoine and her will take Sonic's place, and as you'd expect, they have a really hard time winning because the games are rigged. All of their opponents are badniks that are much more capable of the games than they are. Sally's the best swimmer in the forest? That's nice to know, at least. Good to know a little more about her character. I wouldn't imagine Princess Sally to be a swimmer. Meanwhile, after Robotnik challenges them to win a race with a Buzz Bomber, Tails finds Sonic's special sneakers while trying to make a sculpture for him, which was something that was mentioned earlier so that this doesn't come out of nowhere. And he runs back to Robotnik Stadium to help him. So Tails finally gets to be useful. Apparently, the Buzz Bomber flew backwards and crossed the starting line, and it was actually an exhausted Antoine who won, who won the race. As a result of Sonic creatively using his powers to throw a bunch of dust to confuse the Buzz Bomber. And it's all thanks to him that Sonic was able to win the race. Not that it should matter since Robotnik should- Oh! Sonic destroys Robotizer. Good, he's thinking ahead. But yeah, that was pretty sweet that Tails got to be useful and got the credit he deserved. I think it's really sweet how Tails wants to get fencing lessons from Antoine, showing that he actually respects him. Of course, since Antoine's passed out, there's not much hope of him actually going through with that, and having two swordsmen would be redundant. And in the episode after this, we finally get introduced that Sally can't cook, because her friends can barely remove her spoon from her pancake batter. I like how they actually bothered to explain how she screwed up, saying that she used too much flour and not enough water. And it's good that Tails is helping Sonic with this instead of standing around doing nothing. We also see Rotor enjoying himself with a hobby, an ant farm, although it's a phony one from Robotnik. Why would Rotor ever open a can that blatantly says, Danger, do not open? And considering a giant evil termite jumps out, I think it was obvious why. It can eat literally anything made out of wood. Why did Eggman put it in a can warning Rotor not to open it? And if Rotor's supposed to be a genius, he shouldn't have made that mistake. I do like that joke from Tails. Although I liked it less when I realized he was doing it on purpose and not actually being naive. This is a dangerous situation. He's not supposed to be joking around. It doesn't make any sense. So obviously the termite threatens to destroy all the trees from the green in the Great Forest and get rid of Sonic's hideout as a result. I was actually pretty impressed that they brought back a joke from the beginning of the episode, Sally's pancake batter, 
and used it as a check on his gun, with Sonic sealing the termite's mouth shut with it. That was pretty nice. And at the end of the episode, Eggman receives a present in the form of the very termite Sonic had to deal with. Only now, Lord has modified its wires so that, so that it's able to eat metal and destroy your partner's stuff in the process. Well, I guess... I'm guessing that when he said wires, he meant more than just modifying its wires, because otherwise it wouldn't make any sense that that alone would be able to let it eat metal. But anyways, you'd think that an evil dictator would have been more suspicious of receiving a present. And even he says that all he ever gets is hate mail, so he really does look like an idiot here. And Sonic makes a pun at the end. Although it's at least suited enough to the context that I don't really find it annoying, just pointless. I mean, we already have Robotnik getting calm at the end of the ending joke. We don't need one more. I mean, like, this, like, this could have been removed and nothing would have been lost. So all in all, I like this issue. Well, the first part of it had an idiot plot where the only reason Freedom Fighters were participating in the Olympic Games that they, that they couldn't possibly beat their opponents in was because of Sonic's pride at proving himself as an athlete. At least they had Sally and Antoine allowed to actually do something with the plot, even if it was ineffectual through no fault of their own. What I really liked about it was how Tails was the one to save the day, using a seemingly pointless desire to make a sculpture for Sonic as a check of his gun. Hey, do you think his ability to construct sculpture so easily out of scrap metal from the garbage foreshadowed his being an engineer later on? Not on purpose, I mean, but it certainly encouraged him for showing what he could do. But the real winner was the second half of the issue, with its smart use of the Chekhov's gun while simultaneously giving Sally a flaw for being terrible cooking. Not to mention, like, like it gives her a flaw here, and it develops her character even more with her being a good swimmer in the previous story. And the use of a termite robot makes a lot of sense as a threat to a bunch of people who live in the forest. And again, the episode has more than just Sonic being useful, because things wouldn't have worked out like they did if it weren't for Sally. So I like this issue. And it was the first to not be written by Michael Gallagher, being written by Angelo De Cacere? De Cacere? Angelo, he said. With the use of characters other than Sonic and the use of the Chekhov's gun rather than Duke's Ex Machina, it looks like he had a really good start. I hope all of his issues are like this.